guys, what's up? It's Anna Louise, and today's video is going to be explaining some things about my Beta Fry. I've gotten many, many, many questions on why my Beta Fry, or at least some of them, quite a few of them, don't look exactly like the parents. And I know to a lot of people who are not used to things about breeding um, and like really into the genetic side and stuff like that, a Beta Fish. You're just into like the pet keeping side. I know a lot of you guys don't understand. Um, and of course, I didn't until I got into it myself. So today, I just want to make a video explaining about the genetics and why a lot of my babies don't look like the parents. So if you're interested in learning about that, then just keep on watching. Okay, so for the first part, I'll just be kind of explaining um, like this. And then we'll get into actually looking at the betas themselves. But just first of all, I want to show you pictures of the parents, so I'm going to flash them up on the screen. I'm actually going to use the pictures that will be on my website, which I will be announcing soon, because my betas will be going on sale soon. So the pictures that you're about to see of them are from my website. So I'm going to go ahead and insert pictures of the mom and dad right here. Okay, so now that you have seen the pictures of the mom and dad, which is Sunny and Penny, I am going to insert something very important, which is Sunny, the dad's um, marbling process. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that right here. Okay, so now that you got a good look at that, I know it's hard to believe, but that is the same fish. Sonny started out as a full like koi pattern and then marbled into his mustard gas form. Now mustard gas is not a type of beta like you know you would have a roast hell, pecot, a half moon. It is just a color pattern and the baby's pairs are marbles. Now you may be like what is marble? So a marble beta is a beta who will change color throughout its whole entire lifetime. Like you will get one like Sonny who started out as a koi and then he will go into a mustard gas pattern. The betas that have this gene in them will constantly be changing. So if you get a beta and like a month or two a few weeks later you see it has some kind of weird like splotches, it's turning some type of different color, then that means your beta has the marbling gene. And a lot to most pet store betas do this. Like I have, if you know Enzo, if you watch my videos and see my fish, Enzo, he is definitely a marble. He has changed so much from when I first got him as a koi and now he is almost fully black um, and like cobalt blue with a like a mask on. He has completely changed. I have Klaus, my koi placot, who is so changed drastically. And that's just how it is with a lot of my fish. Um, Koi's are a very prominent marbling line and depending on the breeder like they'll call them different things such as fancy marble, marble, koi, whatever but it is all a little bit different um, and these do all carry the marbling gene. With that the dad of the babies has the marbling gene which I know I keep saying but it is sometimes hard to understand so therefore the babies will change throughout their lives. Now you may say okay well I see that but why are there different colors than the parents have? So, in the parents' family, like, you know, the fish's grandparents, great-grandparents, whatever, no matter what in their genetics, if one of their, like, grandparents or if their dad or mom has one speck of any type of color in them, it can transfer into the beta fry. So, you know, the mom had, like, a speck of red on her, right? Like, a little dot, like, somewhere on the lower part of her body. That can transfer into the betas, therefore I have a lot of betas with red in them and that is why, because any color that has ever been in their line, so their line of genes, such as the dad, you know, the grandparents, whatever, it can transfer to the babies. So that is why you have such a wide variety, because they literally, it's so cool, their whole history um, is coming out in them. So, you know, that's why I have mustard gases, I have koi, I have, like, just all of these different colors and different patterns, and to which tons of mine that have started out as mustard gas, like their father, are all changing into koi. So, I have a few that are doing that, and then I have a few, like, just completely different than what you would think they would look like. So, that's just kind of how it goes. It all has to do with genetics, when that's when you get into the science part of it and like the biology which I think is really really cool and I know it's not for a lot of people but that's just to kind of understand it better um, 
so now I'm gonna go ahead and get into showing you some of the babies and kind of showing you the differences okay so first let me show you these as you can see this is a boy a mustard gas if you can see right here a very very pretty bright tropical looking boy and right here is a koi so see looking at them this one right here actually started out looking just like him which if you remember back from the photo this is what the father looks like so this fish right here the koi you can get a good look right here marbled with the marble gene he sees my finger <laughs> from looking like this to looking like he does now so that is literally the power of the marble gene so even though he looks like this now he will not stay like this forever he will probably end up changing quite a bit more and sometimes these changes can come overnight with this guy's case it did go overnight now with him I would definitely not be surprised if he also turned coy just because a lot of my other ones have now you have babies that look like this guy right here that look absolutely nothing like either one of the parents other than the fact that he is coy especially like the mother who has always stayed coy which he has the red in him which is literally just like if you took a speck off the mother and that speck was literally the gene that he got like because the mother had that the one two two to three red specks it transferred into him so now you have this beautiful polka dotted koi, which I know it is hard to see in the jars. Okay, and now for three more incidents, or yeah, incidences where the beta has changed. You see this one right here was fully red and hot, hot pink, and now he is like a pale pink and white. So then again, it is literally just a piece of a color out of one of the parents that has transformed into the fish looking like this. And with this one, this one is pretty bright red pink and blue he has marbled a lot and like with this one you can see all the different rainbow colors on him which the more you breed into the line the more prominent they'll get like with their colors so there's all just a bunch of rainbows and then you have one like this that is completely cellophane but this girl actually started out being all red and blue and then overnight she just worked on turning cellophane and now she's completely see-through and i wouldn't be surprised if she did turn koi so it's all really cool how the genetics work and having marble betas because you never know what you're going to get and they're always going to constantly change. Okay you guys, so I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope you are able to get a better understanding of the genetics and the marbling gene. If you did, please give this a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe, which you can do by hitting my face right here. And you can also watch another one of my videos by clicking right here. And I hope you have a great day or a great night or whenever you may be watching this video. And I'll see you guys in my next video.